Howdy howdy, and welcome to the Tea Weasel, where I pair teas with movies for your enjoyment. Today we'll be looking at... What? What is this? Charles, this isn't the right vi- Charles, put on the right video. There we go. Sorry about that. But you guessed it, we'll be looking at 1941's Citizen Kane. So break out your most fancy teacups because we're getting super bougie in here. For those of you that don't know, Citizen Kane is renowned as one of the greatest films ever created since it came out and so gets praised to this day. It's no Big Hero 6, but it's pretty good after it gets past the whole news exposition at the beginning. Transitions in this movie are smooth, clean, and fade well into the next scene beautifully for 1941. Every actor brought their A-game to this film and it shows in every single scene. Orson Welles directed and starred as Kane, the main character and his own greatest antagonist of a film. Watch as a reporter digs in to the life of Charles Kane to uncover the mystery behind his last words, Rosebud. Wow, saying Rosebud could not make this pairing any easier since Rose is an ingredient in a lot of teas and itself can just be a tea, but it's me. And that's just too easy. So I decided to make this more complicated than it needed to be because... because. So going off of that logic and being extremely lucky, I found a rosé tea. And I'll let past me explain this tea. Here is my most bougie teacup. Yes, I know, it's pretty fancy. The first step you want to do when making this rosé tea is get the water screaming. Once it begins to scream, remove the kettle from heat and pour the boiling water onto the tea bag inside your bougie cup. Cover it with a lid and let it seep for two and a half to three minutes, depending on your taste preference. Once the time is up, remove the lid and the bag and enjoy your tea. Howdy, howdy. So I'm actually filming this in advance. The reason why I'm in a tank top today is I just got my first COVID vaccine and my arm's sore and I don't want to change shirts and move my arm around. But here we do have But here we do have this Rosé Royale. It's a black tea with sparkling wine and strawberry flavor. It smells great. Here it is right here. Ooh. So, as I said, I got my Fanciest teacup. Now let's have a taste. That's good. 
definitely get a nice little strawberry aftertaste. And it does smell like rosé a bit, or at least it, it smelled more like rosé in the package prior to seeping it. The heat might have evaporated some of it. But it's still got a decent rosé flavor to it. I like it. This tea is made by these guys right here. Alright. Back to future me for this video. Wow. Thanks for that hope past me. Anyways, I want to talk about this movie a bit. So if you haven't seen this movie that turns 80 on May 1st, 2021, and care about spoilers, go watch it. If you have seen this movie in the past 80 years, or just don't care about spoilers, feel free to can you, can you, to continue watching. So this classic film follows the life of Charles Foster Kane. Charles Foster Kane is based off of William Randolph Hearst Sr., who was actually still alive when this movie came out. And although I don't know what his last words are, the last words of Kane was Rosebud's. And the movie follows a reporter as he tries to uncover the mysterious meaning behind his last words. At the end of the movie, you see Rosebud on a sled that he had from his childhood. Going back to the beginning of this movie, when you see Charles as a young boy, he was taken away from his parents and his sled. This makes me think the reason why Rosebud's was his last words was because he wishes he had that childhood innocence back. The life he lived was over the top and luxurious, never truly being happy, but just constantly throwing money at things to keep himself entertained. A most Avery camera shot with him in it has him center frame. The level of power he has at that time can actually be indicated by where he is in the shot. The further back he is indicates he has less power. So if we go to that part where his parents are talking about him before he loses a sled, you see him furthest back. His mom is closest, then there's the banker, and then his dad, and then all the way through the window is Kane. There's also this camera pan right here that I absolutely love. Keep in mind, this came out in 1941 with a very small budget for this movie. The camera goes through the sign, pans down, and goes through the window to go into the building. That's a great shot. Even by today's standards, I love this. It's great. More movies should do this more often, where it's not flying through the air or following a bird or something. You know, just a great transition going into this building. Now it's tea time. So as I mentioned before, I used a rosé tea, which smells incredible. It might lose a little of its smell once you seep it, but it still smells pretty good. The reason why I use the rosé tea instead of a simple rosebud tea can come down to one key factor. The reporter never got his answer about what rosebud was. We, the viewing audience, did learn what it meant at the end, but the reporter himself and everyone else in this world did not understand what he meant. If they did find out what rosebud was, I probably would have paired both the rosé and rose tea for this movie. The rosé for being the figure that was Charles Foster Kane, and then the rosebud tea for who he truly was. I know this video is a little shorter, but I wanted to keep it a little quicker for this one. 
so I could get it out in time for the 80th year anniversary coming up again May 1st 2021. This movie is great. It's really well made and the acting in it is phenomenal. The effects are practical and really well done and I highly encourage all movie fans to watch this movie. There is a link in the description where you can rent or buy this movie. And until next tea time, watch a movie and have a relaxing cup of tea.